Hey all, Coach Brad Loomis here again, and I've just decided, kind of impromptu, that I'm going to go ahead and, and vlog today. Um, today's Thursday. It's probably my busiest day of the week, as uh, I call this my, my triple day. Uh, I'm doing 3D muscle journey work right now on my little mobile device here. Um, I'll do a little bit of, of cardio here in just a few minutes. I hit the American Iron Gym here in Reno, and, and I'll do my... Uh, my training there and then I go to work and I work at the uh, hospital for about 10 hours so I'll be done about 3 30 in the morning but the reason I decided to go ahead and vlog is because um, I'm, I'm uploading videos to my clients right now and I've forgotten how good the internet is here um, I recorded a 13 minute video to a client just now and it was uploaded in less than a minute and when I record a 13-minute video uh, at home in my little town of Portola and, uh, you know, get that uh, through my internet there, it literally takes like 10 minutes. So it's like 10 times faster here. And I thought, gosh, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and vlog because I can get probably better quality too because it's so much faster. And then I don't know, when I upload videos up there in, in Portola, I, it seems like the quality just plummets. I mean, I don't do anything fancy. I, I record my, my, my vlogs on my phone uh, or on my little tablet here. Um, and they, they seem like they're pretty darn good. And then, you know, as soon as I upload them to YouTube, it seems like they just go in the crapper. Um, so hopefully, with the, the better internet here, maybe the video quality will be a little bit better. Hopefully. We'll have to see. And then I just have to use the, the, the YouTube editor when I edit up my videos, um, just because anything else um, on my, you know, on my laptop takes forever. Like usually, if I put together a video uh, and upload it to YouTube, I go to bed. I do it at night, about one or two in the morning, and then I go to bed. And then hopefully it makes it. A lot of times, though, it doesn't. It'll fail, you know, sometime through the night. Um, so that's the way I do my videos. So I apologize for the quality. Of quite, quite a while ago, about probably a year or so ago, I was catching a lot of flack for that. But um, there's one of the reasons why. So uh, anyway, um, got uh, um, the agenda I just kind of laid out. One of the things that I do is I take Yohimbine and, and coffee in the morning. And I usually just do my, my cardio fasted. Um, not because you know I necessarily believe in that particular strategy. Um, I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, it was uh, um, Lyle McDonald that, that outlined a specific protocol using you know, him being in, in fasted cardio for the, the stubborn fat loss solution or something like that. Um, and I kind of question you know, whether or not it works. And I know our director of research, Eric, Eric Helms, as you all know, um, he, he's, he's really done a lot of research on it. He's used that protocol um, and even he kind of questions if it actually works. But, you know, for me, I, I kind of sometimes need a reason to do my cardio. And this is all the reason I need, is if this may have a small chance of working. And uh, a lot of times I'll outline that kind of a protocol for my clients because basically I want them to do more cardio and I want them to have a reason to do it. And if they believe that this might work, then more power to us, right? Um, so... I'm going to get this going. I got one more client to get to um, and then get along with the day. So enjoy, follow along, and um, for those of you watching, thank you. Okie doke. Got my 20 minutes in, and as soon as I get done with my cardio, I like to try to get down some nourishment. So, you know how that is when you discover a certain strategy that seems to work for you, you want to stick with it. And uh, over the last few weeks, I've kind of figured out that after cardio, I get like 15 M&Ms and uh, my BCAA wait for about maybe 20 minutes go to the gym and that uh, first time I did that the workout was phenomenal I had a fantastic squat session and uh, I've been doing it ever since 
So usually that's kind of what I, I start with. I'll usually have like maybe a piece of toast as I'm heading out the door and then just kind of munch on that as I'm going to the gym. And uh, it seems to have worked every single time. So that's what I'll start doing. I'll start sipping on this now. Uh, eat my 15 M&Ms. You can see I watch a movie usually while I'm doing my cardio. And um, get everything together and uh, start heading to the gym. Um, munching on my little piece of toast. And then hopefully, you know, the trend continues. I get great workouts with that uh, strategy. Weight's going down, strength is actually on the way up. Um, this week we're doing uh, uh, AMRAP testing with about 90% of my one rep max and um, getting them for, I think I got four on my bench press and then I got uh, five with my deadlift and today I do squat. So that's the plan and um, until we meet again. All right, so I tried to get more uh, of my workout for you guys, but at the same time, my phone died. You saw what happened during the squats. I just can't win for losing right now with my uh, recording my workouts. But a uh, little confession time right now. Uh, over the next 10 hours while I'm here at work, I'll be knocking out some of my pull volume right here at work with this little device here. One of my coworkers, is a gym rat as well. And uh, I'll knock out about 75 to 100 pull-ups using this little jobber right here. So, um, yeah, I'll get that. Get my 10 hours of work in. Be done at 3.30 in the morning. I hate, hate dealing with drugs. Hate it. All right, guys and gals, so back home, it's about uh, 4.30 in the morning, I think, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, not a bad night, just a couple drunks to deal with, uh, the one um, gal that you guys heard, in, heard yelling in the background, um, but yeah, not too bad at all, I mean, usually on the weekends, when I used to work the weekend shift, holy cow, we do like at least 10 um, patients like that that were just ornery, and it really kind of made me not like my job. Um, so anyway, um, came home. One of the things I was going to pass along to you guys, I was kind of hungry and uh, stopped by the store. I got a flat of these. There's 12 of these in a flat. They're little sugar-free jellos. Um, one gram of protein in these. And I really didn't want to get any more fat in today. I was pretty much out of carbs. So I'm eating the whole flat of these. I'm eating 12 of these. 12 grams of protein. And that'll pretty much do me for the day. Um, with that being said, you know, I'll just kind of share my macros and kind of some of my thinking behind it. Uh, I don't mind doing that. Yes, I have to survive on what a lot of people consider poverty macros. But uh, during my off season, I found out I can pretty much maintain, you know, between 168 and 171 pounds, taking in 60 grams of fat, 250 grams of carbs, 250 grams of protein every day. And uh, I bet my weight would just stay there. And um, the whole time I was doing that, strength kept going up. Strength kept going up. I'd run a mesocycle. Volume, volume, volume would be up. Drop the volume down. Run intensity. Test the maxes. 1,215 pounds. Start another mesocycle out. Volume would go up. Volume would go up. Volume would go up. Taper it off. Run an intensity cycle. 1,225 total. So there was no doubt that I was quote-unquote, gain-taining. Um, so I just kind of used that knowledge 
and some uh, information that uh, Eric Helms passed along to on to us to kind of design my my dieting periodization, my dieting mesocycles. Um, we actually, us coaches here at 3D Muscle Journey, we actually pay Eric a portion of our income to keep us abreast on all the research that is out there. Uh, he, he, he's just a master at being able to just tear the research apart and really get down to what is, you know, basically um, true, you know, what is, what is uh, real and what is uh, a faulty study. And with that being said, one of the things that uh, um, he passed along to us in one of our, our weekly uh, research updates is that we really don't have uh, any true studies on um, you know having restriction the way that we have typically done it low days high day you know six low days and a high day four low days and a high day have you um, but the research that we do have is kind of the exact opposite maintenance two low days maintenance two low days and um, so with that being said, I thought, you know what, even though you know, we have all this, basically just tons of anecdotal evidence that you know, the way that we typically do intermittent restriction, low days, high day, low days, high day, I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to flip it around, see how it works for me. So knowing that 60 fat, 250 carbs, 250 protein is basically what I need to maintain about 170 pounds. I just simply started interjecting two to three uber low fat days. So all week long, 60 fat, 250 carbs, 250 protein. Three days in a row I'd go 20 fat, 20 to 30 fat, 250 carbs, 250 protein. It's like a 370 calorie, de salary deficit. Um, three days like that, then I'd go back to 60, 250, 250. Do that for four low days, or for four, you know, maintenance days. Then two to three low days. And what I would do is I just kind of periodized my entire diet that way. Had it like that, you know, kind of basically maintenance, three low days, maintenance, three low days. Started to kind of spread it out. I'd go maintenance, four low days. Maintenance, four low days. And then I kind of went, you know, basically the end of my dieting mesocycle. Maintenance, five low days. Maintenance, five low days. And I just kind of finished off my dieting mesocycle. I just had five straight maintenance days, 60, 250, 250. And now I just started my new mesocycle. So to this week, I had three uber low fat days. This is my last one. And this is kind of helping me. So that's kind of my diet periodization. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run an entire, you know, diet mesocycle again. Starting off, I did, last week I did two low fat days. The rest were maintenance. Probably the next two to three weeks, I'll do three low-fat days. The rest at maintenance. I'll dig hard, do four low-fat days. The rest at maintenance. Maybe five, but then I will end that with like an intensity block in training. I'll just go maintenance for five, six, seven days, whatever. And that's how I've been setting up my, my diet. My, my diet periodization. And uh, it's working. It's working great. The weight's going off slow, very slow. Luckily, I don't have very far to go. Plus, more importantly to me, is I want to make sure I maintain my strength for that powerlifting meet in May. So, all right, guys, sorry. This is a long video. I'm back in the crappy world of Internet. It's going to take all night to upload this six-minute segment of this video. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed it. hope you learned something from it. I'm going to put it all together, get it up as quick as I can. And until next time, thanks for watching.